Well, hello from Emerald Hill Skies. We're uh, coming to you from just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Sorry, we've had two different blue screens of death here. But I go ahead and try to start the stream. If it freezes again, then you know that I am lost out there in, uh, in the world of internet somewhere. I'm just gonna ask and see if our audio is okay. Are you guys hearing all right? Hello, are you guys hearing okay? There we are. Okay, so I don't know what is causing these blue screens of death, but um, we're gonna go ahead and get configured here. Let's see, we're gonna bring up the sharp cap screens. That talks to our uh, Pegasus Astro power box. That is such a fancy looking piece of software that I sometimes wonder if they kind of went overboard on programming it. It's just so amazing looking. It's got all kinds of, you know, beautiful colors and uh, I'm just amazed at how beautiful it looks. But I wonder if they used up a lot of, you know, what do you call that, like MIPS when, um, I wonder if they used up too many of those MIPS and now it's just, um, now another thing it could be is the connection to the scope cam. I've got the little, the little uh, thing on my phone here and it, it watches the telescope out in the, in the observatory and then I connect the screen on my phone and live stream the screen on my phone into one of my windows. And I've wondered also, does that little program somehow the thing that connects me to my, because you understand I'm using my iPhone as an app and then I'm live streaming the screen of my iPhone through the live stream. So I've also wondered if that maybe uses up some MIPS as well. Let me think about for a second what I need to do here. I need to get the sky cam back. Let's, uh, let's grab the right screen of sharp cap. That's not it. So there's the sky cam. And then I need to get the, um, let's see, I need to get, need to get Stellarium back up. Now that's another thing it could be. Stellarium is misbehaving. Uh, Tiffany says we had a bit of intermittent audio. So that's not good. We shouldn't have been losing audio. Okay, so uh, I've got the uh, Astro Planner up and running. And that's a new version too, a new version of Astro Planner. So several of these have, have uh, been upgraded and I went ahead and loaded the up. Now here we go trying Stellarium up. Ray, good to have you on board. Tiffany, welcome back. You're always such a good welcomer of everybody. You're kind of the channel hostess. John, good to have you on board. And um, who else do we have here? We've got um, Vito from PureTech. Good to have you, Vito. Ricky, good to have you on board as well. Okay, so there's Stellarium that hasn't Planner. So you need to make that live there. And then in sharp cap, we need to hook up the mount to sharp cap. Okay, that's done. All right, so let's see what we got now. I think we've got
Okay, so that's working all right. Let's get our um, field of view up. Okay, I think we're up, ready to rock and roll here. Um, why don't we start with um, Abel 426. It's a galactic cluster. And... Uh, weeks I don't know literally the last time since we um, broadcast we live streamed so okay so we'll do a um, a plate solve here and make sure that we're still synced with the sky you guys have like a little we have like a little community don't we we've got all the usual suspects here, except uh, Stu hasn't. Okay, am I live again? Can you guys tell me if I'm live? Boy. It's maybe disabled. Hmm. Hello. So maybe this device. Check one, two, test. Testing one, two. Okay, now it looks like we have audio there. So you guys will have to tell us if we have audio back again here. What I did was I tried to take out the crazy uh, audio processor that I was using to see if that was it by chance. 
So let me know when you get a chance to uh, tell me if you're hearing audio again. Ta-da! Audio, Tiff says. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Tiffany, you're great. What I did is I went back to the old um, lavalier mics and, uh, and you know, it didn't crash with them last time, so I'm just wondering if this new audio processor, Ty Opal guy says, I don't go outside. Um, okay, so we're back. We're at least back streaming again. Now let's start getting everything running again. <laughs> I'm sorry for this, guys. The telescope is not pointed toward the north anymore. Remember, we were in the middle of um, we were in the middle of slewing, so that might be a problem because. The question is, will it remember where it was? So let's just, now it says it's still tracking. So we're going to hope that the telescope remembers where it was. And here's the um, sky cam again. So we've got that back. Um, now let's get the uh, actual ZWASI 2600MC Pro back, if we can. And I'm going to assume that Stellarium should be OK. But then again, we could run without it for a minute, just to, you know, like they say in Spanish, para sacar las dudas. Uh, the that opal guy, that opal guy says looks good. That's good. All right. So I think what we'll do is we'll try to connect to the mount, and we'll just try to um, try to do a plate solve from right here and see if the mount can talk to Sharp Cap from here. Normally. We point the scope toward the exact polar north position, and then we then we turn on the mount software inside. Now it says it was off five degrees, but it is apparently trying to correct for that. So that's good, right? All right, so let's plate solve one more time. Don, you mean as in? Wow, Don, you do have a new name. Now let me try to plate solve one more time and see if it knows where it thinks it is. The other question is, did we get all the way, we must have gotten all the way, to go to ABLE 426 because, yeah, so now we were just off five hundredths of a degree, and it's correcting for that five hundredths of a degree. So before we go any farther, let's just do some astronomy here. <laughs> Since we haven't gotten to do anything yet, and it's been a half an hour. So let's go ahead and start live stacking here. Prep for imaging only. And this is ABLE 426. So let's talk about, um, you know, electronically assisted astronomy for a second. You know, there are so many pieces to electronically assisted astronomy, and then we compound that exponentially by trying to live stream while we're doing EAA. And then I'm compounding it more because we're live streaming from 200 feet away from our observatory. The observatory is out there, 200 feet from where I'm sitting, and that means that we're kind of asking for trouble, aren't we? But on the other hand, 
here's the sky and that's good. Um, so let's get going here. So, so I guess what, what astronomers often say is, you know, there are so many spinning plates here, what could possibly go wrong? That's the joke, what could possibly go wrong? There's so many things that could go wrong. So this is a part of the sky that we normally probably would just gloss over, wouldn't we? Uh, because there's nothing that really stands out there. But let's do our, let's do a plate solve only. And now this seems to be working. So I wonder if it was the combination of that um, more powerful audio processor and it just didn't like the hookup to OBS. That's what I'm wondering. We'll know in a second because I'm going to bring up Astro Planner in a second. Frank Rossetti, it's good to see you again, Frank. All is well, but we have had, Frank, tonight we've had some blue screens of death, four in a row, and we wondered what was causing those. I wonder if it's this big audio processor I was using. Now I've just gone back to the old uh, lavalier mic that I, I used to use. We're hoping that'll, that'll be the culprit, but we're kind of having to experiment with with uh, trial and error here. Okay, so that's two minutes. Now let's do this uh, deep sky image annotation. And you notice right away all of the different galaxies that are showing up in this frame. That's because it's ABLE 426, a galaxy cluster. And here's the book from, uh, you know, the book that we're using, Cosmic Challenge. And there's the, uh, the cover page. Look at this nice map. We use this instead of Stellarium for a moment. <laughs> Look at all those galaxies there in a cluster. And let's start, let's bring up Astro Planner and hope that Astro Planner wasn't causing the blue screen of death. So here comes Astro Planner. And I think I'll stay on my, um, my webcam while I bring this up, just in case it dies. As you know, Astro Planner is the software we use for uh, targeting and also logging what we're looking at. And it's kind of a relational database software, you could say. So I'm going to mark here that we've observed ABLE 426. And Right here in the middle is NGC 1250. So let's zoom in on that. This is looking like, a, this is just four minutes, but it, it's looking like a, a kind of elliptical, isn't it? There is no moon tonight. It doesn't rise to 1 a.m. So all we're seeing here is the fact that we're pumping the mids up quite a lot. We're at 260%. I'm going to get rid of that uh, deep sky image annotation just a moment so we can concentrate on how small that galaxy is. That's in GC 1250. And the size of that is 2.7 arc minutes. So you can almost see it starting to pixelate there. As soon as I get you back on the screen, huh? You can almost see it starting to pixelate there. But I'm going to um, zoom in a little bit more just so you can see this galaxy has no structure. It's just a, um, an elliptical 1250. NGC 1250. We're in Perseus, by the way, the constellation of Perseus. And I think most people would have normally skipped over 1250 because it's just this little blob. Let's go back out to 100% again. And let's put our deep sky image annotation back on. 
And let's look at, let's see, what else do we have here? How about 1270? Yeah, there's 1270. It doesn't even have an NGC number. And 1270 is way up here at the top. So let's zoom in on 1270. I'm going to go back on the screen and make sure, yeah. Let's zoom in on 1270. And by the way, here's 1267 and 1268. NGC 1270. I guess it does have an NGC number. Don't know what I was thinking there. So let's drop off the deep sky image annotation again. Again, it looks like a little blob, doesn't it? See if Harrington says anything about 1270. Um, even the largest amateur instruments fail to show all of the little guys. And he talks quite a lot about 1275, but I haven't seen 1275 yet. Let's put our deep sky image annotation on again. You guys help me look and see. Do you see 1275 here? Okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to open up Stellarium. Everybody cross your fingers. And we're going to see if Stellarium uh, version 23.4 is what the culprit is that's causing this thing to go south. M42 is nice. It uh, basically, uh, Don, it takes up the whole screen. It's, uh, it's really nice and it's, it's actually the object for which maybe this setup was best made. Now watch the way this works now. Let's say we want to go to 1275, um, NGC 1275. What I do is I, I first of all go Control-1 in Astro Planner. Oh, you know what, I need to run the script first because otherwise it hasn't uh, executed the script yet. So here I am, I'm going to run the script. Now this is another thing that we're doing new. We're using these little subroutines to help us find things. So that could be another thing that is causing things to go south. We're going to try it, right? NGC 1275 selected. Okay, so we're going to say Control-1. Still DSA couldn't completed. do it. Control-1. Oh, maybe we don't have the desktop audio turned up yet. Let's go check that real quick. Audio, desktop audio, it should be good. Well, I sure didn't hear the little guy. He's supposed to work, report back to us when he's captured that, that object in memory. DSA completed. He's not talking to us, sadly. Well, that's a shame. I had that working before um, we started getting these blue screens of death. So evidently what that means is that my, maybe NGC my speaker for my, no, that shouldn't do it. Well, for some reason we've lost the audio on that, but anyway, what it does is it copies the coordinates for a certain object into the 
deep sky image annotation, and then you can paste custom object information in, and didn't copy it. So much for that. Let's try this one more time. No. DSA completed. GC1275. So that part is not working. Well, we'll have to come back to that. Figure that out later. But for right now, let's take the galaxies we can see. Here's uh, IC0309. I see 0309. Uh, that's the same as 1277. 0309. So I'm going to enter that in as a synonym for 1277. Let's have a look at him. So we probably wouldn't have. Thus the deep, thus the cosmic challenge. We wouldn't have noticed that this was a galaxy, I think, except for the color, huh? Um, oh, Tiffany, you're saying that he did say that the something was completed. You heard it. Well, why can't I hear it here? My speaker must be turned on the wrong thing. Let me just see if I can check this. Ah, that's exactly it. My speaker was turned on my wireless microphone. <laughs> OK. So there, there is this IC309. Look how he just looks like a little blob. And that's the same as 1277. Ever since I got my first good telescope in 1971, an 8-inch reflector, I've been fascinated with the Perseus gal Galaxy Cluster, otherwise known as the Abel Abel Galaxy Cluster 426. One reason I'm so fond of this collection of more than 500 galaxies is that the cluster grows as the telescope aperture increases. Small backyard scopes will show two big kids on the block, NGC 1272 and NGC 1275. But even the largest amateur instruments fail to show all of the little guys. Uh, also known as Abel Galaxy Cluster 426, the Perseus Galaxy Cluster lies close enough to the plane of the Milky Way that the surrounding field is strewn with nearby stardust, which creates a very pretty overall effect. There are plenty of hidden treasures scattered throughout the, the cluster's full 190-minute expanse. How many can you pick out in your telescope? It's about 230 million light years away, and he tells how to find it. He says they just look like small blemishes. He says a lot about 1275, but I don't know that we're seeing 1275 unless... It has a different name. It's also known as Perseus A. So maybe we just don't, maybe, maybe we just don't have it here in this frame, in this field of view. Maybe we missed it. Deep sky image annotation. I'm gonna ask you guys to help me look for it. Now look, here's here's a fairly big one. ICO I see 0310. So let's search for him. Um, I'm going to bring that little fine box down here. I see O. I see O. I see 0310. Aha. Uh -huh. That's the ticket. I'm going to put that in as a synonym for 1275, so this won't happen again. IC0310 is an alternate name for NGC 1275. Okay, so right here, in other words, this is the one that he said we would see first. Boy, it is even tiny though, isn't it? It just looks like a little, he says, uh, through my 10-inch, NGC 1275 will look like a small, slightly elliptical glow 
that is punctuated by a bright stellar core. Yeah? When we gaze upon that small blemish, we're seeing a seething system in uproar, a galaxy that is emitting tremendous amounts of X radiation. The full story behind NGC 1275, the one that our little cursor is pointing at there, was unveiled in 1943 when Carl Seifert included it in his list of galaxies with active nuclei. NGC 1275 is also included in 3C, it's included as 3C87 in the third Cambridge catalog of quasars. So let me put that down as another synonym, 3C87, also known as 3C87. Uh, radio sources, published in 1959. Not just any radio source, mind you, but the second strongest in the entire sky. So when we see this little green blemish here, we're looking at the second strongest radio source in the entire sky. Small blemishes. Me as a teenager, Tiffany says. <laughs> <laughs> Studies now reveal that filamentary jets of material are erupting from the core of NGC 1275 and discharging into space at greater than 5.3 million miles an hour. Hubble images reveal what the fuss is all about. We're not looking at one galaxy when we view NGC 1275. Rather, we're looking at two separate galaxies that are intimately embraced by gravity. So what we're going to do now is sneak out to Hubble and we're going to look up NGC 1275 wiki. Aha. Uh -huh. So when we look at this picture here. That's the live view of this picture here. And we've got two galaxies that are evidently interacting with each other. Boy, a lot of gases, hydrogen alpha, And evidently, th these kinds of things are these jets that are streaming out from it. Photographs clearly show the disrupted disk of a dust-laden spiral galaxy cutting through a large elliptical galaxy. Ah, at speeds approaching 7 million miles an hour. So look, see these spirals here. Let me find it again. I lost it when we went when we went big. See these spirals here. These spirals are cutting through that elliptical. So the elliptical galaxy is that little white blob, and the spirals are these bluish arms. It's like sawing through it like a buzzsaw. And that's what's happening over here live in this little green dot right here. Little green blemish. Whew. Second largest radio burst, right. Not just in that area, Tiffany. It's the second largest radio burst in the entire sky that we can see from Earth. In the process, gravitational tidal forces distort each galaxy, compressing huge clouds of interstellar matter and triggering new star formation. And then he says, after it, okay, let me just write this down just briefly on 1275, because that is interesting, isn't it? I'm going to say, 
second largest radio emitter in the sky uh, interacting a spiral buzz sawing through an elliptical. See Hubble images. To our Rasa 11, it just looked like a small green blob. Hmm. Tiffany says, goodness, <laughs> That's, that pretty much sums it up. Okay. Well, I like Astro Planner working here off screen because it means that I don't have it there showing up as real bright. Now, brace your eyes for a second because, see, here's what I'm using. And when I did that observation, I went to this screen and typed it in live here. But Astro Planner doesn't have a gentle dark screen to it like Deep Sky Deep Sky Planner 8 did. But we switched everything over to here now in Astro Planner. And then what I'm going to do is just keep it off screen so it doesn't blind you every time I bring it up to make an observation. Is that okay? Is that fair? Um, then he, he talks about the second thing, NGC 1272. Now I'm going to try this again now that I got my speaker fixed. I'm going to say Control 1. DSA completed. Ah, I hear you now. So the DSA, which stands for Deep Sky Image Annotation, Deep Sky Annotation, it's copied that material to its um, to its to the clipboard, and then I should be able to open up. Let's go back here to to full screen again. And boy, thanks to Pete for helping me get this squared away. Should be able to show Deep Sky Image Annotation, and then here using this little paste custom info, it should paste in 1270. And sure enough, it did. No, 1272 is what we were supposed to have pasted in. So apparently, 1272 has an ICO number as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Astro Planner. I'm going to go, please help me find NGC 1272. Um, but we need to know what is the, do you think it's ICO 310? Is that one? Nope, that was 1275. So what is the synonym for NGC 1272? I don't see it in these. Tell you what, let's just go out to the web real quick. And let's go with uh, NGC1272 wiki. And it doesn't show an ICO number either. It shows a PGC number. Where is 1272 here? There's 1271. Do you think it's off of the frame, maybe? Could that be? Not that. Not that. He's giving alternate NGC numbers here. No, he stopped. So we've got 301. There's, look how he lights them up so you can find them. Could it be ICO, IC0301? Could that be it? 
So what's the NGC number for ICO301? I'm going to go down to Astro Planner. I'm going to go Control Find IC0301. Yep, that's it. So I'm going to put that in as a synonym for 1262 so this doesn't happen again. IC0301. Now let's zoom in on him. And we'll drop out the deep sky image annotation again. Um, so he's right here, isn't he? Right? Yes. Right there, in other words. Uh, this, he says, after 1275, the next brightest member of the Perseus clan is NGC 1272. You'll find it just five minutes to the west. Although NGC 1272 is listed at a visual magnitude of 11.7, you may feel, as I do, that sur surface brightness is at least a full magnitude lower. Uh, he says, in some scopes, it's easier to see than 1272. Oh, no, now he's talking about 1273. Oh, boy. So here is 1272, nothing outlandish. Let's zoom in as much as we can before we start pixelating. It just looks like a green blob. We're looking at 230 million light years away here. 230 million light years. I guess we'll give it to him. That's quite a ways, isn't it? But these are not outlandish targets for us. Now where's 1273? Let's try let's go back to full auto and put the deep sky image annotation on again and bring his little thing over because he's using I bet he's using like there's I I see zero three one, two. Let's see what that one is in the NGC world. These are different designations from different catalogs. 0312. Yep, that's 1273. So I'm going to put that as a synonym for 1273 so we'll know next time. I see 0312. And let's zoom in on him. Now well, that's interesting, isn't it? There's a little bit more structure there. Look at that. You have to wonder, is this a star in the foreground? Or is that a companion galaxy? Let's see what he says. While its magnitude is only 13.2, NGC 1273 is actually easier to see than 1272. The difference is in the apparent size. NGC 1273 is only half the diameter of its larger but dimmer neighbor. The resulting higher surface brightness helps make this spiral an easier catch than the larger elliptical. All three galaxies form a triangle to center the cluster. And then he goes to 1277 and 1278. So we saw, I'm going to put a note here, we saw in 1273 we could see a companion star or galaxy either adjacent or in the foreground. So this is NGC 1273. Well, let's do let's go back to the web and go NGC 1273 wiki and this is what we're seeing right here wasn't it oh right here let me make this a little bit smaller since our picture is smaller anyway 
So right here is this. And it looks like maybe that, you think? Or this, perhaps. Maybe this is the star we're seeing. It doesn't look like that star is interacting with this elliptical galaxy, does it? Boy, it doesn't look like much of a spiral in the Hubble view, does it? I see 312. We're definitely looking at the right galaxy there. But this picture doesn't really do it much, much justice, does it? Doesn't make it look like much of a spiral. Let's scoot that back behind so we don't blind you anymore. Um, OK, so that's 1273. Let's see what else he draws attention to here. A fourth very faint distended patch is 1277 and 1278. Oh, boy. Let's see if we can find them. 1277. Oh, let's go back to deep sky image. Oh. First, let's go back to 100%. Go deep sky image annotation. 1277 and 1278. Well, now let's look at his parallelogram he's been making here. So, have we observed? 308, would that be? Go down here and find what is IC0308. No, that's not it. 0309. Yeah, that's 1277. So IC0309 is NGC1277. Oh, I guess we'd already noted that. And Is 300. Oh, it's way over here to the right. I see 0, 0300. I see something you don't see. What? It's saying it's right beside 1277, 309. Can this be? I see. Oh, not found, it says. I see. So we got to find. Um, twelve seventy seven and twelve seventy eight. Which are not in our list. So here we go to silly wiki again. Um, we're going to look for. NGC twelve seventy seven wiki and find out if it has any IC number listed. Why don't they list IC number for this? Doesn't look like it has one. You can tell we're in these little exotic galaxies now, can't you? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is say add NGC 
1277, that's 309. Oh, I'm getting these mixed up, aren't I? So this is 1277 here. And he says that beside it is 1278. So I wonder if it's this or that. Robin doesn't have it marked in sharp cap. So one of these, okay. Are we ready to try to bring up uh, Stellarium? Let's try it. We haven't crashed yet, but it could be that we fixed our blue screen of death because of the audio processor. Let's try to bring up Stellarium and see if Stellarium can show us these. So here we go. Cross your fingers that we don't blue screen of death. Solarium 23.4. Oh, did we already have Solarium up? We did. What am I doing? It's back here behind us. Okay, so let's go to um, NGC 1277. Calls it a relic galaxy. Must be its nickname. And here's 1278 beside it. And the other one is NGC 1274. So it's closest to 1278. Let's get a feel for this now. Um, what we can do now is we can say control two. Oh wait, we have to be on Astro Planner when we say that. Control two. NGC 1277 selected. Okay, now when we go over to let me see if I can get this straight. Control one is what we want, yeah. Hmm. Still not quite getting the hang of that. So that's 1277. Now what let's try is, it's a little bit too close. Let's try to take deep, let's put it in the middle so we remember where it is. So that's NGC 1277. Now let's take deep sky image annotation off and let's go back to Stellarium and let's find 1278 which is right there beside it and let's go control one God, oh I see since we're in Stellarium, it's, it's using Control-1 to move the telescope there. So I have two different um, shortcuts going, don't I? Control-1 in Stellarium, and then I have an Astro Planner, Control-1 as well. So in Astro Planner, I'm going to make the script that lets us grab the DSA, I'm going to make that control two. And I'm going to make the one that syncs it to Stellarium control three. Okay. So now, um, we 
should be able to highlight 1278 here and say control 2. DSA completed. Okay. Now we go back here and we should be able to turn on deep sky image annotation and paste custom object info. So maybe it's ICO 300. You think? I don't think so. Maybe it's pasting it up here at the top. But let's see, 1278's not going in there. Look, there's 1278. That's what we're looking for, right? Yeah, 1278. So, why? So now how do we get it to show us that? Like if we put crosshairs? No, that didn't work. How do we do this? Let's see. Put deep sky image annotation on. If we find 1278 somewhere, if we were to find that, and it is right here, why doesn't it? I see 1907. That helped us. Robin just doesn't have it marked. Maybe center it in view? No, we don't want to move the mount. How do we make it show it to us? I'm going to have to look that up. How we make it put crosshairs on that? Because I'm not seeing how we do that. Maybe the fact that it's saying objects nearby means it's outside the frame. That's exactly what it means. It's outside of our frame, and that's why we're not seeing it. Okay, well, this is a new thing to try to use all this interplay, isn't it? Tiffany says, I will never cease to be amazed at how many objects there are out there. Boy, that's a good point, Tiffany. Okay, so anyway, we did we ever observe 1278? I don't think we did. Let's see what else we can catch here, though. Um, can we see IC301 here? Is that marked? IC301. Aha, uh -huh. it is. This is IC301. I wonder what it's, I wonder if it has an NGC number. It says it's in the NGC catalog. IC301. Boy, we don't have the synonym here. Let's go grab it real quick. Oh, I know where we could get it, right here. I see 301. Oh, it doesn't have an NGC number. Look at that. I see 301. Let's kind of back off here. So it's a little bit away from this patch of the field. 
And sure enough, in our field, look how it's away from that field, the same. I see 301. So let's look at him real quick. Kind of like maybe, do we already? Yeah, I think we already looked at him briefly. How about IC309? Back out to 100%. Anybody see? Here's IC3010 and IC308. Oh, IC309. Well, look, so we've got this in here twice. NGC1277 is IC309. So I'm going to um, erase 309. Because it's the same as 1277. But right now we have them on our list twice. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna delete him from this plan. Okay. How about IC 312? Right here it is. IC 312. Well, he's got also a little a little uh, companion beside him as well, doesn't he? I see three twelve. doesn't have an NGC number. Man, you're right, Tiffany. Tons of galaxies. Imagine what we can't see, Don says. There's that little companion star beside it. That's IC312. Okay, I see 320. How about that? I see 320. It's nice to have Stellarium back, isn't it? I see 320. Because we can just go over here. Oh, wow, he's out of the field of view, isn't he? I bet. Let's put our field of view on here so we can see. Mm -hmm. So here's where our Rasa is. No NGC number. So let's see if he's off the field of view. Let's go control two. Rats, I think I have to be back here. Control two. DSA completed. Now here, let's say paste custom code. I don't like it that it doesn't tell me IC320. Doesn't tell me. This box, Robin, if you're watching our broadcast, the guy who invented SharpCap, you don't give us any feedback. IC320, here it's at the bottom of the list. So it's 
not in our field of view. So we'll have to go get him in a second. What about IC 1907? I see 1907, 1905. So we go back here to Stellarium. We say, I see 1907. Oh, surely that's in our field of view. It's the same as 1278. We saw 1278 a while ago, right here. So I see 1907 is NGC 1278. So that's, I'm going to delete that from our plan as well. Now, how about NGC 12? Yes, we already did 1250. How about NGC 1260? There's 1250. Did we see 1260? Yep, there it is. Twelve sixty, and look, twelve fifty-nine is right beside it. So this is the live view. This is not a, a planetarium software. There's NGC 1260 and there's NGC 1259. Probably the first time that my eyes, well, I know, not probably, the first time my eyes have ever laid eyes on this. NGC 1259. There's 1259 and 1260. 1259 and 1260. My goodness. So many galaxies. So that must be 1259 and that's Oh, there's 1259 and there's 1260, sorry. 1259, 1260. 60 can see a nice spiral structure now. It's just a classic Milky Way look here, framing up, albeit very small. 1260 is um, one arc minute. And if you include the outer rings, 1.7 arc minute of, ex of extent. Ray says, yes, new to us. Dennis, imagine what will be created when Beetle just blows. <laughs> Ray, been around since the beginning of time. Been feeling like myself. Been feeling like that myself recently, Don says. <laughs> so, 1259 and 1260. Check. How about 1265? Did we see that one yet? Go back to the full frame again. Twelve sixty five. There's twelve sixty four. Oh, there it is. Twelve sixty five is right there. Twelve sixty five. Boy, that is so bright. How is that a galaxy? And there's twelve sixty four. I'm just gonna say here under the observation. So bright comparatively. Twelve sixty 
Let's go look at 1265 and a Hubble view real quick. Sorry to blind you. NGC 1265 wiki. Well, it's a Fanarov and Riley class one radio galaxy. So that must be that star that we're seeing here. And then the radio galaxy is behind it, apparently. Because sure enough, look how bright it looks here. So a radio galaxy. Now, I think we already saw 1267, correct? Boy, this is such a complex mess. Twelve sixty seven. Twelve sixty seven. Must be one of these ICs, right? No. And GC twelve sixty seven is not an IC. So it's Again, we should be able to go control two. No. We go down here and say control two. DSA completed. And then we should be able to go here and paste it in. Twelve sixty seven. Oh, look, it's up here. I like it that Robin illuminates the galaxy in kind of a lime green. So you know where it is from that deep sky image annotation list. Twelve sixty seven and twelve sixty eight. Boy, we would just have never observed those ever. We just wouldn't have done it unless we would have had cosmic challenge. That just looks like a a bloated star, doesn't it? I'm just gonna say here looks. Twelve sixty seven. Looked like a bloated star. And twelve sixty eight. We have to go back here and say. New observation. You can't just scroll down the list. Um, a little more nebulosity around this one. Now we need 1274.
NGC 1274 is not an IC. That's real close to 1275, which is the Perseus A, uh, Perseus A thing, and that one is IC310. Let's go back here again and find IC310. Twelve seventy four is right beside it. So let's zoom in here. It doesn't have twelve seventy four marked. Let's take deep sky image annotation off. Let's go down here under twelve seventy four and go control two. DSA completed. Let's go here and bring up this box and paste it in. Rats, it must have a different name again. 1274. Hmm. Oh, 1274. It says it's not in this frame. So we'll leave that one for a second. 1278. Did we see that yet? 1278 was up here, wasn't it? Mm. No, that's 68. That's going to be off the frame, too, I bet. DSA completed. I see 1907. IC 1907. We'll go ahead and fill that in so we'll have it. IC 1907. But that's off the frame as well. Look at this double star here. NGC 1257. Double star. So NGC 1257 is not even a galaxy? That's kind of a letdown, isn't it? It's just a double star. So somebody saw it and thought it was a galaxy, cataloged it as an NGC object, and then later found out, oops, it's just a double star. Anyway, that's not on our list, but it was in the field of view. 1281. That's going to be off the field of view. All right, so let's stop live stacking here and let's do this. Let's, let's adjust our field of view to catch some of these that we're not seeing, like, for instance, NGC 1274 was off of our field of view. So let's slew there.
Dave, thanks for being with us. It's a very intense night, isn't it? <laughs> this is a, a little bit different kind of night because we're in this galaxy cluster kind, kind of trying to pick out these galaxies one at a time. Very intense. Okay, so it is, um, it is plate solving this image, so that's a good thing. Only. This is centered on NGC twelve seventy four. like a treasure hunt, isn't it? It's like one of those magazines we used to see in the dentist office. I think they were called Highlight. And you'd, you'd see this, um, this picture and it'd say, find the fish, you know, and find the beach ball and all that. Oh my goodness, look at all those other ones that, that were off the frame. That's incredible. The Perseus Galaxy Cluster, otherwise known as Abel 426. Okay, so NGC 1274. We weren't able to see that a while ago. Oh, right there it is. Let's do this, um, this thing we have to do sometimes, where we go um, solve only, and that'll align our uh, uh, Ray says it reminds me of Where's Waldo? Exactly. Tiffany remembers Highlight Magazine. <laughs> you must have gone to the dentist, Tiffany. What was the galaxy cluster again? You probably heard me say that a while ago, Ray. It's the Perseus Galaxy Cluster, ABEL 426. ABEL has two L's, so it's A-B-E-L-L. -L. ABEL 426. Okay, now when we put this um, deep sky image annotation back on, it should be spot on. Okay, so 1274 is this one. Right here. A little bit of spiral ring structure there we can see, but not a ton of spiral structure, huh? Just a little bit, you can tell that it has wings. So new observation for that. Barely discernible wings of the spiral structure. Twelve seventy four. Now, can we see twelve seventy eight here as well? Yeah, right here. So here's 1277 and 1278. 1278, 1277. Twins. 
splotches. Twin splotches. Let's say here. Twin splotches with twelve seventy seven. Now, where's 1281? Oh, here it is 12. I just saw it in the list. 1281. Oh, up there. Twelve eighty one here. <laughs> Look at every one of these is a galaxy. And every one of these galaxies would have like, what? Like, how many stars? How many would you estimate? NGC 1281 might have. Let's just take the Milky Way as an example. Number of stars in the Milky Way, 100 billion. So every one of these could have 100 billion stars because the Milky Way is kind of, what, maybe middle size? 100 billion suns. <clears throat> and if even half of those have planets, that is so many. Twelve eighty two. Tiffany says, mind blowing. Ray, probably trillions in each average. Whoa, really, Ray? So you think Milky Way is actually not as big as the average? Okay, so. 1282, let's go over to our list again. That was a little bit easier, wasn't it? 1281. Boy, I wonder if we click that. Oh, it does. It puts them in numerical order. Look, we're learning all kinds of things. So there's 1282 and 1283 side by side. Twelve eighty two and twelve eighty three. I love it that we're like giving attention to each one of these because it's kind of like did you ever see that verse in the Bible where it says God made all the stars and knows them one by one. How does that go again? God knows the stars by name. Psalm 147.4 He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Psalm 147.4 So I don't know what name he uses, 
But he's got to be pleased that we're paying attention to the 100 billion to, if Ray is right, up to 1 trillion stars in NGC 1282 and 1283 here. And I just got to ask you, how many times do you think that amateur astronomers have looked up NGC 1282 and 1283 as carefully as we are tonight in all of history? I mean, has it been a thousand times a year that somebody did this? I mean, I suppose, right? Somebody would have looked up these little green splotches a thousand times a year, don't you think? Somewhere on Earth? But tonight, Lord, we are paying attention to your stars. And we think they're amazing. So that's pretty cool. Oh, look at all those galaxies. 1283. How about 1293? Right there. Look at that bunch up there. 1293 and 1294. You know, doesn't it make you feel a little bit like we're just on a little tiny rock at the edge of the universe? I mean, <laughs> This cluster is not a cluster of stars. This cluster is a cluster of galaxies. And each one of these galaxies has tons of stars. And we're looking at a whole cluster of galaxies here. Makes me feel like we're living in a very small rock in an out of the way place. Tiffany says, and God is pleased. And Ray says, amen, Tiffany. That's awesome. You guys are awesome. To put up with this, you stuck around during the slow startup. All right, so there's 1293 and 1294. Now, what about NGC 2689? Did anybody ever look for that? <laughs> Some astronomer did, NGC 2689. Perhaps I don't see it. NGC 2689. Whoa. How is that close to the Perseus cluster? That's got to be a mistake. NGC 26. No. Oh, you know what it is? It's UGC. UGC 2689. Yeah. That's what it is. So let's go back here and say. Still not in the view here if it's listed by its UGC name. UGC 2689. Boy, it's out there by itself. I surely that's not in our field of view. So let's make the little control two thing. Oh, I gotta do it down here, sorry. I gotta be highlighting. DSA completed. Now let's go back to here and go to the end of the list and paste it in. I didn't 
see it pasted in, did you? Here's you see 2689. DSA completed. It's not, it's not pasting it in, so it must have some other name. Right? Let's skip it for right now. PGC 12254. PGC 12254. It's back in the thick of things here. It's so exotic, it doesn't have an IC number. Tiffany says, I feel tiny. <laughs> Look, it's so exotic, it's not even got a label by it. I keep hitting. DSA completed. Don says, I am but a wee speck in the cosmos. Objects in view. Oh, look. It's putting them on the map. Look. It just, I see, if we, if we paste them in, we shouldn't look them in with this box. We should look for it with, with crosshairs. Because Robin uses circles. But this little utility I have, thanks Pete, Pete does them with crosshairs. Now I get it. I'm sorry I ever doubted. So right here is PGC 12254. Star plus a galaxy. Do we see NGC 2689? Because I don't remember seeing that. Let's try that again. NGC 2689. Oh, that was the thing where it should have been UGC. Let me correct that. It should be UGC 2689. DSA completed. Now let's go back out to full screen. I wonder if we, no, we have to have Deep Sky Annotation on because there has to be a place to paste it. Must be off. It's not on our screen, I think. Unless it has a different name. And there's no other name given. UGC 2689. So I think that's off screen. How about UGC 1271? Did we look at that yet? UGC 
that away as well. It seems like that's a mistake. U UGC 1271. Nope. Oh, I wonder if it's, it should have been NGC 1271. UGC UGC Yeah, it should have been that's a duplicate for NGC twelve seventy one. Good. So let's delete him. Okay, how about UGC twenty five ninety eight? Look there's Jupiter. UGC twenty five. Five ninety eight. Yeah, that one's in the ballpark, but it's probably off screen. So here, DSA completed. Yeah, that must be off the screen. Skip him for now. UGC 2608. Stu! We didn't know you were on, Stu. It's good to see you again. <laughs> this is a little bit intense tonight, wasn't it? <laughs> UGC... Twenty six oh eight, it's right there. I think that's going to be off our screen. UGC twenty six fourteen selected. Okay, so that's another way to find them. UGC 2617 selected. It's a lot faster. UGC 2618 selected. UGC 2654 selected. UGC 2686 selected. UGC 2698 selected. UGC 2717 selected. UGC 2733 selected. Okay. So, let's um, close out this live stack and um, let's do one more just big look at the whole overall view of all those galaxies and just think one more time of all those places to live if we just have a spaceship someday. It is 12 and I know we said it would be 10 to 12 so I don't want to keep you guys uh, much longer but I I do want to say thanks for hanging with me tonight. We had a rough start tonight. This is the way electronically assisted astronomy streamed to the web sometimes is. We're upgrading these programs to take advantage of new features. And sometimes when we upgrade the programs, we have uh, the programs don't interplay well together. So what's our theory tonight about what caused this? We think it might be the audio processor not meshing well with OBS. That's what it seems to have been. Because when we switch to this lavalier mic, OBS has, has behaved now. So I think from here on out, I won't try to use that audio processor anymore. I'll just go back to this mic again 
and just be happy with that. Um, ever since we did that, we, we haven't had any more crashes. So that took us a half an hour to kind of sleuth out that bug, didn't it? And you guys hung in there, so thank you for that. Then the next thing we did is we started to hang around this uh, incredible, you know, galaxy cluster here that is just a kind of a an example of one of those things you see sometimes. Remember when you've seen before, they'll say that it's called the Hubble Deep Field or whatever. It's just one galaxy after another after another. And tonight, with our live telescope, we weren't seeing the Hubble Deep Field, but look, all of these different splotches, they're all galaxies. And this has been, to me, a fascinating study tonight of a galaxy cluster. And as, as far as targets go, you know, I don't know if we moved around the sky a lot, but we did see a lot of galaxies, but they're so small, huh? So it's 230 million miles away. So summing up, I think we saw a lot of grandeur that was all far away. And I just want to thank you guys for hanging in there. If you like content like this and you want to subscribe, we hope you will. If you're watching this in the recorded version, thank you for hanging with us. If you like content like this and you want to press thumbs up, it does help to get it into the screens of other people. Uh, it will also, if you subscribe, will let you get that little announcement when we're doing these. You can also go to emeraldhillskies.com and sign up there for the email announcement. And we usually do those 24 hours in advance as well as create this placeholder for the stream 24 hours in advance on YouTube. So where, whichever one you sign up for, you should get jangled, or you can sign up for both. And uh, thanks for being a part. We'll look forward to doing this again next clear night. I watched the clear skies, uh, you know, indicators, and we try to do this at least once a week every time there's clear sky. Thanks for being a part of this. Thanks to you guys who've taken part. Uh, God bless you, and thank you, God, for making all these amazing worlds to live in.